I guess netball sort of like the equivalent to rugby, I guess. What did he say? Oh. Yeah, it's meant to be a non-contact sport, but... Co- Hey guys, welcome back to the Up and Coming podcast. I'm Tanisil Winikade. And I'm Connor McMullen. And this podcast is where we interview rising stars who are on the path of chasing their dreams. Today, we have a very special guest, Grace Hamilton. Yeah, so Grace um, is an Australian rugby union and rugby league footballer who captains the Australian Wallaroos and the New South Wales Waratahs. In 2020, she played rugby league for the Sydney Roosters in the NRL Women's Premiership. From country New South Wales, she started playing rugby on a university exchange in the USA. She is known for her fierce approach to the game on the field and her friendly nature off it. So we welcome you, Grace. Hey, guys. How are you? Good, thanks. How are good. you? Yeah, good. What have you been up to? Been um, at the moment, we're in, like, lead up to Wallaroos Camp. So in two weeks, we're in Wallaroos Camp. We've got the World Cup in September. So basically satellite training around Australia at the moment in the lead up to that and yep. the Super W in May. Do they have like a big squad for that? Yeah, so at the moment there's 44 of us, um, yeah, from all around Australia and we're just due to COVID kind of, yeah, satellite training in every state and then we'll come together in two weeks, have 10 days together and then go away for another month. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, So we'll start from the beginning, like where where did you grow up? Um, I'm from Orange, uh, country, lived on a farm between Orange and Cowra. Country boy. I um, am... It's good. I kind of, yeah, grew up on a farm, sheep farm, and then went to Kinross in Orange yep. uh, for high school. Mm-hmm. Very heavily rugby-orientated school. Did you play rugby there? Uh, no, no, I didn't start playing rugby. I was a netballer. Yep. I played hockey. I did athletics. Yep. I kind of did every sport that I could do at school. Yep. Um, and then I ended up going to university in Canberra and then playing rugby in America because yeah, they yeah. didn't know what netball was. So for yeah, me... Yeah. They didn't really know what netball was and I was like, well, I need to make some friends in America so I'll play sport and I'll play rugby and yeah. then I kind of never stopped from then on. I guess netball is sort of like the equivalent to rugby, I guess, in, uh, in, in a sense. Yeah, it's meant to be a non-contact sport but co- netball definitely is a contact sport but um, I think it was more my, my family, my brother and my dad are heavily involved in country rugby and then I, yeah, I learnt the I knew the rules when I was a baby so... Yeah, I started as inside centre yeah. and now I'm in the back row. But, um, yeah, it's exciting and it's just a great sport. Yeah, for sure. Um, have you got any siblings? Uh, yeah, I have a brother and sister, both older than me. And did they go to Kinross when you were there? Yeah, they were in Kinross. Um, my brother played rugby. My sister, not really a sporty. She's more the academic child. Mm-hmm. I wasn't that and neither was my brother. So we played sport, which yeah, yeah. is good. Yeah. And do you think, like, your parents were big role models for you growing up? Ah, uh, yeah, but they were also, they weren't like the parents that like lived through you. They yeah. were like, yeah, do whatever you want. Um, we'll relax. support you in, yeah, in a- anything you want to do, regardless if it was like academic, music, sport. They'll like try everything and have a crack at everything. Yeah. Um, they wanted us to work hard in if we wanted to do something, but yeah, yeah they never pressured us to do things we didn't want to do. That's good. So when did you actually play your first <laughs> game of rugby? Uh, 2000, and, gosh, I don't even know anymore. 2012. 12 maybe? Yeah. How old were you? Uh, 20. I was 20 years old. So I literally did. I played a lot of touch footy and things like that. But yeah, yeah I didn't play rugby union until um, I was 20 years old. So yeah, it was it was nerve wracking. But also, I don't know, it was exciting. And then from being in America and playing sport, they just they fund so much of it and they take you everywhere. So I ended up playing all around America and then ended up playing for the South of America because um, they have a North and South conference. Um, Played in the national competition over there, which was which was awesome opportunity for me. And then, yeah, ended up coming back here, playing for the Brumbies and moving up to Sydney and playing for the Waratahs. Ooh, so. You sort of wish you started earlier? like it. Yeah, I get so jealous of girls now who play in high school. And we go to, I go to so many schools and um, mm. help do some rugby clinics and things like that. And there's so many girls. Um, and I'm like, gosh, you're going to be so much better than any of us. Yeah. Um, Just to get like, the skills down yeah, when they're earlier. In yeah, the- um, they're unreal. But... Yeah, I don't know. I was involved in it, but yeah, I wish I started earlier. But then also, I'm grateful for the years I had when I wasn't playing high level sport because I got to have that those years of having fun with my friends and yeah. just playing um, for the fun of it before everything got a bit serious. Um, so, like, 
when did you want like when did you realize like you wanted to take rugby professionally uh i don't know uh i was kind of i was at university and i just kept playing and i kept getting selected in these teams and i was like this is weird and i was inside center at that time um so i played for the brumbies as a center not a back rower yep. um and in, inside or outside? Inside. inside. Actually, I think I played outside for the Brumbies, which is, yeah, I played outside centre. So yep. I played 13. We had a ball playing 12, so yep. I just ran the hard line outside. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I just kept getting selected in these teams and then I moved to Sydney and I knew rugby up here was a lot better than anywhere in Australia and I was like, I'll have a crack and and I went okay. So yep. I just kept playing. All my mates ended up um, getting selected as well. So it was kind of just like doing what your friends were yep. doing and – and then I end, friends, yeah, and then I ended up, yeah, playing for the Waratahs, which is probably what I always wanted to do. Yeah, yep. and captaining them as well. Yeah, I am the captain at the moment, so yeah, it's been it's been a hard team to captain. Also, like they're so successful, we've kind of never lost. So, <laughs> <laughs> ensuring that that we continue to be that good um, is a bit difficult, but it's something it's exciting because yeah. we believe we can win, which is good. Where do you think you got your leadership qualities from? I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, maybe my, like my my dad. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We kind of always had to work on the farm every weekend. So it was, um, yeah, it was what we did every day. We just had to go out and work. So, um, so you played for a bit for the Roosters last year. Yeah. Was it hard? Was it hard transitioning from Waratahs to Roosters, or was there much of a shock? Um, I don't think. I think. Transferring from rugby union to rugby league is would be easier than transferring from rugby league to rugby union. Really, we see a lot of leagueies go to union, but yeah, but I think also they you get a bit lost because of rugby league. They're so structured in oh, their yeah, set yeah. plays. Yeah. Um, when they, I see a lot of girls come to union and like just get so lost in where they should be and and what sort of game they want to play. Whereas for us going there, it was kind of like lesser role, especially as a back rower. You're involved in like every little thing. Mm. Whereas. In rugby league, it was just like, yeah, this is your one thing you need to do. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was yeah. exciting opportunity. So, would you have a preference uh, between league and union or...? I'm definitely a union girl. Yeah. Uh, I just like how you can compete all the time for the ball. Um, and you're not... We, I know when we played, we were so much... We were so structured in, like, just take it in rather than play space. Um, I really enjoy playing space and be able to shift the ball around. So I'm definitely union, but I really enjoyed league, so I wouldn't say I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. Like you've obviously achieved quite a lot in rugby. Do you have like a particular favourite moment or something that you achieve that you're most proud of? Uh, probably the first game I captained for Australia was pretty special. Yep. I think the whole of Orange nearly came mm -hmm. to Newcastle to watch us play. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that was exciting. There were so many people there, but... Um, I think last year we actually played a trial. Our Waratahs girls played a trial against Fiji. Yep. And the women's Fiji. Yeah, 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 the women's Fiji national side. So yep. the Reds had just played them and they'd lost to them. And we, as the Waratahs, were like, all right, we have nothing to lose. Let's just go out there and, yep. and play the best footy we can. And we ended, up, we ended up beating them. But I don't know. It was just a weird feeling, that team we played in um, and our Waratahs girls, because we know each other so well. It was just such a great game to play and yeah. for us to be a national team I think that was just the confidence leading to Super W for us yeah, sure. that knew we could we could do anything so yeah. yeah that was probably one of my favorite moments as well yeah and then like when you play is there anyone in particular you play for or anyone who you want to make especially proud I uh I, I I think everyone would say their family to yeah. be honest um yeah but I'm not I'm not shy of saying that I kind of want to do myself proud as well I want to I want to be the person that gets better every time and I want to be the player that is accountable to myself. So if I can do what I want to do on and off the field, then yeah. I'll, be, I'll kind of be proud of myself and that's something that I need yeah, to do in every cool. game that I play. Yeah. Do you have any superstitions or routines that, <laughs> you, that you follow pre or after game? Yeah. Um, I'm a bit weird. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> Not too weird. Um, I write in a book before I play every single game. So I have these books that I've written in basically telling me what I'm going to do in that game and and what I'm going to get out of it and why I'm playing. So I, I write in this journal every every single game that I play in, regardless if it's club, 
Super Rugby or, or, or an international game. Yep. Um, I write in that. And then I have to be really, like, clean. I just have to be showered yep. before we go warm up. I have to have a clean face. I... Yeah, I don't know. I just have to be really clean before right. I go and do it. It's not everything. that weird. I thought it was going to be something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's all my superstitions. I just I write in a journal every time yeah. and then, yeah. But also my training schedule is probably the odd one. I have my calendar and I put, um, I have like a star chart. Yeah, yeah. Like you would when you're in kindergarten. But I have a gold star, silver star and a green star. And basically I just like rate myself of how well I've trained or if I've completed all my training. Yeah. So... If it's gold, I've done everything I can. And then, like, if I miss a training session, it's just, it's silver. And, and I don't think you have to put pressure on yourself. You can miss training sessions. But yep. it's more about me being accountable for that training or, or making it up. So yep. I always make sure I'll make it up if I if I miss something. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. You're obviously trying to get the gold star every training. <laughs> yeah. That, trying to. Is that, um, is that the main colour on the board? Or? Uh, I, I, we're kind of routine now. So, yeah, try to get there. But mm. there's some days where you don't feel great in training yeah. and, and that's fine but yeah I, I try and get as many gold stars as I can <laughs> <laughs> so how do you recover from training and games like when you play professionally it's um it's a big deal to recover properly and make sure you're you're ready for the next day of training or whatever um recovery probably not my strength neither yeah. is warm-up everyone gets upset with me because I'm just that person will just rock up and start playing rather than warming up but <laughs> this year has been my my New Year's resolution to warm up properly. So I um, am doing that. Recovery, I try and get in the ocean. I try and get in water or like stretch. But my thing is more just sleeping and eating after. I haven't been very good. Um, I never really eat after training because I never feel like I want to, but they've told me that I really need to. So um, yeah, trying to do that and trying to get enough sleep is probably my main thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, what do you get most nervous about uh, on game day? Uh, is it performing well? Or yeah, it just, it, it's or kind good? of performing. I kind of I, – no, it's not looking good. <laughs> I, if you see any rugby photos of me, they're not pretty. Um, it's – I don't know. I get nervous. I get nervous for the team. It's probably not myself. Um, being in a situation where I don't – and I don't – I'm unknown. So, like – if we if something goes wrong and me not knowing what to do, I, I'm pretty confident in in what I in the game. So for me to be able to allow others to like flourish in that game is really important to me. And I and I, it's something I've learned over the next over the last couple of years is the if something goes wrong, I have to be I have to as a leadership in a leadership position, I have to be able to get that other person off the ground, not let get a head get down. I want to get them up. So. For me, it's that positive, trying to keep everyone positive um, and being consistent with that. Also, you know, you get tired in games, so I just want to be able to feel fit for the whole game. So that's probably my most <laughs> nervous thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, you've been in a fair few, like, change rooms. What do you think the biggest difference for, like, men's and women's change rooms? Like, the culture in the sheds, is there much difference? Uh, so? I don't know. Um, I just can't say I've been in a boys' change yeah, room. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 um, I, I, I guess it's kind of the similar. Um, we have a lot of meaning behind it. I know the boys do things as well, but we put a lot of our values up there. We we have pictures of our family. We have pictures of ourselves playing in our jerseys. Or or we even previously, I know we've done things where the people that have worn the jersey before us have been in our locker. Yep. Um, like photos of them? Or no, just their names yep. that they've been like played in like number eight and they had all the Australian number eights in, in my locker. So it's like... Yep. It's kind of bigger than you and you want to leave your jersey in a better place. So yep. that's something that was really, really great when we started playing. Or there's like – I know the boys have put Loratars when they won that 20, uh, 2014 grand final. They put in their GPS pockets in the back of their jersey, they had like their little note yep. um, on their little Y, like their family or like their friends. And they yeah. had they all wore that in their – in that pocket oh, right, um, yeah, yeah. In the throughout the game. Sort of yeah, yeah, so yeah. like you put your GPS in but you're putting this little note in as well, which I thought was a really cool mm. cool thing to do that no one would ever know about. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And like training and playing like takes up a lot of time. How do you find like balancing work with, with that? Uh, yeah, it's tough sometimes. And I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't wake up and some days I'm like, I can't be bothered. Yeah. Um, it is tough but it kinda, you, once you get into that routine, it's just like – you're so used to it. I know, like, if we have an off day now or if I don't train for, like, two days, I am, like, the worst person. I was like, you don't, like, I have to be able to exercise. I have to be able to train. So 
I think it's just everyone's addicted to it now and it's just kind of our way of life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you say there's like still more to achieve in your career? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so people ask, they're like, when are you going to retire? And I was like, I'm not retiring. <laughs> like, I'm like yeah. I know, like, I've got the World Cup this year and I was like, I just feel like I have so – I can get so much better and I, and I think until I'm satisfied with how I'm playing – um, I don't think I'll retire. Uh, also, until I beat New Zealand, I won't be retiring. So yeah. uh, that's my goal, beat New Zealand, win the World Cup this year. But, um, yeah, I'm excited about it. Mm. And then, like, what advice would you give to any people, like, wanting to play, especially especially young girls, like, coming through the ranks? What, what advice would you give them? Uh, I say this to so many. I'm like, you can do anything, like, boys or girls, sport, not sport, yep. academics, anything. Um, I think if you just try something, you've got to actually give it a real go. You can't go in – um, yeah, you can't go in half-hearted. You have to – everything you do, do it with purpose. I say that to so many people. It's like you jump in, you jump in fully. Um, yeah. And and that's something I, I like our, my teams to be involved in too. If we, we're going to commit to this and we want to win, you have to be full, full in there. Yeah. Um, you can't be that person that just wants to rock up um, a few days a week. You have to – be fully committed so regardless if you've like that's your job too you just give it a real crack yeah and if you don't like it in the end you don't like it and you move on but at least you're giving it a real crack yeah yeah sweet well before we uh finish up we got a few questions from the from the fans if that's all right <laughs> i'll get our um, uh, cameraman angus duff to uh, uh duffy. You're we'll have funny. a look here we'll have a look yeah so yeah so who's your inspiration i guess growing up from Daniel Farr. Maybe now. <laughs> Shout out to Daniel Farr. Dan Farr. Yeah. Um, you don't know who that is. We're pretending we don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my inspiration. Uh, my family. I always say family, but I'm like, that's so boring. Did you Everyone have a favourite player family. growing up or anything? Uh, I did. Yeah. I was a Scott Fardy fan. Oh, yeah. My favourite when I was little was Lottie DeKiri mm. oh, yeah. and Matt Burke. Um, but then I was more of a Scott Fardy um, fan. Next one, Duff. What's it like growing up as a female rugby player? Uh, I grew up as a netball player, but rugby player, I feel like it's the same as growing up as a boy. Like, you just... Yep. Equality. A player. Mm. Um, it's it, But no, to be honest, like it, it was tough in the beginning. Like, I know if I, when I was, like, your age, I would have kind of looked to... And being like, no, I'm not playing rugby. You don't want to be. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that girl. Mm. Um, but then once we started playing, I was like, oh well, it's so much fun, and I and I get why all of like Australia loves rugby. Yeah. Shout out Jimmy Rose. <laughs> Shout out Jimmy Rose. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you bench? Oh, not that much. I actually did testing yesterday. I actually don't want to tell you. Yeah, um, more confidential. Me. No, I don't care. Um, I used to bench a lot more. We I benched seventy eight. Oh no, not seventy eight yesterday. I benched like sixty eight yesterday. Yep. And I was pretty tired, so that was probably my max. Work yeah. in progress. Yeah. How long do you want to play both rugby and union? Or, oh, we already answered that. Yeah, I kind of at the moment this year is rugby union, but if I back in time, the Roosters have said that I could play some league, so we'll see. Yeah, does that, it doesn't clash over, does it? Uh, some of it does. I'd miss, like, basically the pre-season and of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But we'll see. I, I don't really mind. This year's kind of – I need to go to the World Cup, so yeah. that's my focus. How has woman, women's sport progressed in the time you have been playing rugby? Uh, just the exposure of it. Yeah. It's on TV now. I'm in my first camp. We were in boys' gear. Um, and it was a leftover boys kit yeah. So it was like really big on everyone <laughs> And yeah So we've just got We've got women's clothing yeah. Which yeah. is great And yeah The support around it And kind of yeah The exposure of the game Is, is grown tenfold yeah. Well Thanks guys for coming in today And uh, spending time with us Anytime Thank you thank You're you. doing a um, great job <laughs> Yes Thank you um, her socials will be in the description below. <laughs> will they? Check okay. Her out. <laughs> <laughs> up to you. If that's uh, all right with you. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, well, ours will definitely be in there, so you can go check that out and uh, stay up to date. And um, see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you. We let it all know. Pull up. Fuck, fuck. Streets are smoking now. Yeah. Trenches fighting now.